Welcome. Today I will talk about the chess variant um, Fisher Random Chess, also called Chess 960, and I will explain the name Chess 960. So the name Chess 960 is just referring to the fact that there are 960 different starting positions in Fisher Random Chess. The question we will go through today is why are there exactly 960 different positions? Well, Fisher's idea was the following. You randomly order pieces on the uh, first and eighth rank, yet in a symmetric way. So white and black's position of pieces are going to be the same. So if white's king is on b1, let's say, then black's king has to be on b8. Well, so it suffices to just look at the white pieces. And now um, the first idea that you might get is, well, you want to arrange eight pieces on eight different squares. And if these eight pieces were all different, what you would do is you would have eight options of placing a piece on a1. Then this piece would be out and you would have um, seven options of placing some piece on b1 and so on. So um, in total, after um, having placed two of these pieces, it would be eight options for a1 times the seven pieces which have not yet been used for b1 and then so forth for c1, b1 and so on. So what we would get is we would get in total eight factorial or eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one different permutations. So this would be the answer if we had no constraints um, and no two pieces would be equal. However, in chess, um, we have a couple of pieces which are the same. So in particular, we have two rooks, two bishops and two knights. So the position in which I put rook number one on square a1 and rook number two on square h1 is the same position as if I were to put rook number one on a, uh, on a1 and rook number two on h1. So therefore, I have to divide these 40,320 positions um, by two to take into account the fact that we have two different rooks. Yeah, so I, I double count them when I do the permutations. The same is true for the bishops. So um, same is also true for the knights. So suppose you have a, um, a position, um, a permutation in which you place knight number one on a1 and knight number two on b1. And there is also one position in which you do the exactly exact reverse. And this is also counted in the permutations. So to account for this double counting, uh, we reduce the number of permutations by 2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 8. So we get in total 5,040 different starting positions if we do not constrain our problem further. So well, um, we know that the game is called Chess 960, so there has to be something else. And well, Fisher came up with the following two constraints. The bishops should be put uh, on opposite colors and the king should be placed in the middle of the two rooks. The first constraint is basically um, to have a little bit more of a normal chess game where you have one, p one bishop of, uh, which is white squared and one bishop which is a uh, uh, dark squared bishop. The second constraint um, is to allow for the option of a usual kind of castling um, where the king and rook land on the um, usual squares. So, um, let's go through these two constraints. So let's start with a bishop, bishops which should be placed on opposite colors. So suppose you put your bishop, one of the bishops on a1. Well, in this case, you have seven other possibilities for placing the um, second bishop. Yet, only four of these possibilities will put them, put the second bishop on a white square. So b1, d1 f1 or h1. So similarly, if we were to put the first one on b1, we could now think about the number of possibilities uh, to place a bishop which would place the second bishop on a, a black square, thereby respecting this constraint that the bishops should be on opposite squares. Well, in this case, we again have um, four different options, a1, c1, e1, and g1. 
and three of the options D1, F1, and H1 would not satisfy the constraint. So in total, four out of seven options that we have satisfy our constraint. So what we can see is that the first constraint reduces the number of uh, different starting positions, which are feasible and satisfy um, the first constraint by a factor seven over four. So we multiply the number uh, 5040, which we got for different starting positions, uh, with four out of seven, which is the fraction of positions um, for which um, the two bishops are on opposite colors. This leaves us with 2880 starting positions. Well, this is still not yet the 960 we are aiming for. So let's take a look at the second constraint. The second constraint tells us that we put the king into in the middle between the two rooks. So let's suppose we have our king on um, e1, the rook on d1, and the rook on f1. So let's first suppose we just place these three pieces on d1, e1, and f1 just in an arbitrary way. So one option is to place the king exactly in the middle as we have it here. The second option would be to place the king here and the two rooks on that side. And the third option would be to place the two rooks here and the king on f1. So in total, we have three different options. And out of these three options, just this option satisfies our constraint. So only one in three uh, options is going to satisfy our constraint. So again, we can shrink the number of positions by factor three. So we take the um, different starting positions, which satisfy constraint one, and um, divide them by factor three, which leaves us then with 960 starting positions. So this is exactly the number, number we were shooting for. Well, so this is for me the most logical way of explaining it. Um, there is also one way of dealing it, which is a little bit maybe more popular, which I found uh, on several websites, but um, yeah, which is not as simple in a mathematical way as this one. So let's go to the second way of um, coming up with an alternative way of setting up the pieces in a sequential way. Um, and still end up with these 960 positions. So let's um, clear the board again. Okay, so for the second way, we now think of um, the pieces in a little bit of a different way. So we think of one bishop as being the light squared bishop. We just declare it, this is the light squared bishop. And the other bishop is the black squared bishop. This also takes this constraint already into account. So then if I start setting up pieces, let's suppose I start with the bishops. Well, for the black squared bishop, I have four options, a1, c1, e1, and g1. Let's suppose I put it on c1. And then for the light squared bishop, I also have four options. I can either put it on b1, d1, f1, or h1. For illustration's sake, let's suppose we put it on h1. So in total, there are four times four uh, admissible ways of arranging two bishops. So um, we have in total 16 ways of arranging the bishops. Next, let's consider the queen. Well, this is relatively simple. So we have six squares left and we have to put the queen on one of these six squares. Let's suppose we put it on uh, F1 for illustration's sake. And so the number of um, starting positions that generate again increases by factor six. Now let's consider the knights. So we have um, five times four possibilities of placing the knights. These are again the permutations. We uh, have to, so the knights are equal. So there is no white squared or dark squared knight in that sense because there is no constraint. So um, for instance, if I put my knight on a1, then there are four different squares on which I can put the second knight. Um, 
and so forth. But again, to avoid double counting, it doesn't matter if I put this knight on a1 and this knight on b1, or if I, I swap the, these two, I will always um, end up with the same position. And therefore, from the 20 permutations that we have, we have to um, deduct half of them in order to get to different ways of arranging the two knights. So this leaves us with 10 ways of arranging the two knights. And um, yeah, then there is a unique way of setting up king and the two rooks. So in this case, the king has to be in the middle, just three squares are left. So we are forced to set them up in this way. So now if we um, again um, multiply these numbers, we get four times four for the bishops, times six for the remaining squares of the queen, and then times 10 for different ways of arranging the knights. And finally, there's a unique way of arranging the king and the two rooks. All right, so what is left to do in order to start your Fisher random game? Well, I guess that's pretty obvious. You just do the same thing for the black player. So now it's time to start your Fisher random game. You know why there are exactly 960 starting positions. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. When you have stress, play chess. When you fall on your rest, play chess for a real deal, for Christian seal.